Or if you take the beginning of the massacre, or if you take the siege, or if you take all the messages, the, the SOS messages, and I'm not even going into the, the phone calls that uh, um, Hassan Jafri himself is supposed to have made, because that's a contested terrain. Because when it comes to that, there are a whole lot of people who are de de uh, denying that, who are saying, no, 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 we did not receive any such calls. So even if we don't go into that area and limit ourselves only to what is accepted by the state authorities, they admit that they were aware of it, they admit that they exchanged all these messages about the prolonged siege and about the massacre, and yet, and they also say, and in fact Modi is lauded by SIT for being so focused on tracking the violence as it unfolded, you, for holding a series of meetings with uh, senior police officers who were aware of all this violence from their own, from their own messages, it is evident. Yet, these police officers apparently did not breathe a word about this massacre to <coughs> Modi till 8.30 in the night. Now, one of the reasons, I mean, you were the, uh, the, uh, related to that same question was, when did you come to know and what measures did you take? So if this man has come to know about it after it was all over, in fact five hours after it was all over, what measures could he have taken? So the second question becomes redundant because he came to know so late. And another important purpose this claim about having come to know at 8.30 serves is that it also explains why uh, at the uh, 6 o'clock uh, broadcast to Doordarshan, the peace appeal, he talks only about Godra incident. He denounces only the miscreants behind the Godra incident. Why he doesn't say something similar about uh, the people who killed even larger number of people at uh, Gulbarg society. So if he uh, betrayed that kind of uh, you know blatant uh, discrimination, he has a ready explanation for it, which is that he had no clue to this uh, Gulbarg society massacre. Now, this five-hour silence which he's claiming, from a legal point of view, it suggests his complicity in a conspiracy. And from the point of view of governance, it suggests that he is nothing like the very decisive and impartial administrator he's made out. That cops can, you know, keep him in the dark about something of this magnitude for as many as five hours. And imagine this man, unlike uh, Rajiv Gandhi has no fig leaf saying that, look, he was in, uh, during that period of violence, he was in, um, you know, uh, three Murti Bhavan standing next to the dead body of his mother and uh, receiving, uh, you know, state guests from around the world. He had no such uh, excuse. He was, in fact, taking pride in saying that he anticipated violence and he was very much uh, seized of the situation and he was not just the Chief Minister, he was also the Home Minister. He is still the Home Minister of Gujarat. So, this is the way it uh, happened. And this was the role of uh, the, uh, the media during that time. I have no explanation for why the media was unaware of it contemporaneously. Uh, but this is how uh, the press conference took place on that same day and he was not asked about uh, Gulberg Society. And that same evening, uh, uh, in fact, during the, uh, the course of the same day, Naroda Patia incident took place, and the big, uh, uh, you know, killing uh, in Naroda Patia came to light even in the evening. This was after uh, Gulbag Society. So that's how, in uh, sequence, it is number two, though in magnitude it is greater. In fact, the greatest in 2002. Now, the this uh, after this, I'd like to talk about one uh, uh, thing about uh, what happened post, just as I talked about what happened during the violence in 84 and then what happened post uh, violence. I'm observing the same pattern here. I'll just now explain to you how uh, the situation was from the media point of view during uh, the violence in 2002. Now what happened uh, post 2002? But before that, I, I want to say that uh, the reportage of the Godra incident, uh, particularly in um, the uh, Gujarati media, was very inflammatory. Uh, this is again not something that I am saying, this is something which the Editors Guild, the most influential journalistic body, said 
after doing a fact-finding mission. It was a mission conducted by three eminent journalists, uh, B.G. Varghese, Dilip Padgonkar, and Akar Patel. And uh, they gave some very amazing examples of uh, the kind of reportage done by two big uh, Gujarati newspapers, uh, Sandesh and uh, Gujarat Samachar. The front page of Sandesh on uh, 28 February, that is the morning after uh, Godra incident, uh, had this screaming headline uh, saying, Avenge blood with blood. A very provocative headline. And uh, another story made the baseless claim that 15 Hindu girls had been dragged out of uh, Sabarmati Express in Godra. That was a train which was attacked. Uh, and that breasts of two had been cut off. And Sandesh followed this up with an equally false story the next day, claiming that the bodies of two Hindu girls abducted from Sabarmati Express had been recovered after they had been raped and burnt. All this was subsequently denied by the Gujarat police itself, that no such incident had taken place, that uh, I mean, no such girls were you know, attacked, Hindu girls were attacked and raped and murdered and burnt. Now, the coverage of uh, the post-Godra violence was uh, no less sinister. The Bhavnagar edition of uh, Sandesh on March 1, 